It's cold and snowy January here on the farm, but today is actually the beginning of the new season because today we're starting the first seeds of 2022. New Dahlia May calendar. That's pretty exciting. Trina loves Dahlia May. She's a, a avid follower on Instagram. So if you haven't heard of Dahlia May, you should go check her out. Twenty twenty two season begins now. It's a bit intimidating thinking about starting the 2022 season because uh, we basically go from like lazy mode with the winter to as soon as like the ground is workable to like as busy as we can possibly be. And in those first few weeks are, are quite the adjustment in just going from like lazy time to like crazy busy time. So it's always intimidating when you're on the precipice of the cliff of hard work but um you know it's also exciting because you know it is so much fun to grow all the the flowers and all the food and to have you know all the fresh food in the farm which is something that i love you're a bad cat you're a bad cat we've done some tidying we've made some space but now we need to pull out all of our seed starting equipment it has been in storage for a very long time since the summer. So we need to find it all, make sure we have everything so that we can get these going. Watch out. This fertilizer. We need fertilizer. Doesn't look like it was like moldy or anything. Probably the most important thing of all that we need is we need to get our grow lights. So we need to pull those out and get those into the bathroom. We have big plans to renovate this room into our flower studio. The first year that I grew seedlings in this bathroom, we, it wasn't finished at all, it was plywood walls, and it, I ended up growing mold <laughs> in, in the walls. Uh, so Ian got very mad at me, and then we renovated the bathroom, now it's beautiful, and he said, you can't grow seedlings in there, you can't do it, but every year I do, and I think that he's okay with it, because when we designed the bathroom, part of the design was this second shower head. We have the shower head for, for bathing, but then we have this shower head, and the entire purpose of this is for me to be able to come and wash the seedlings when I'm growing them in the bathroom, um, you know, or to wash things in, in this big shower space. Uh, so we're, we're ready, we got all the equipment we need. <clears throat> Look, you set up a little smorgasbord for this cat. Buddy, that cat! Oh, you are a bad boy, buddy. You're a bad boy. This is one of the reasons why we had to close the door to this room. Because he eats fried flowers. You're a bad cat. His favorite is Larkspur, because it's poisonous. <laughs> I'd like to thank our sponsor, Growing for Market Magazine. Growing for Market Magazine has been the trusted source for organic farmers for over 31 years. It doesn't matter if you're a commercial grower or you just want to grow like one. With thousands of archived articles that are easily searchable with a full access subscription, you'll find the info that you need. All articles are written by farmers for farmers. And it doesn't matter if you love growing veggies or flowers, if you're selling at the farmer's market or doing a CSA, bootstrapping tools or using professional greenhouses, there will be an article for you. Subscriptions start as low as $30 per year. Check out the link below in the description to get 25% off any new subscription at growingformarket.com. I think it's reasonably mixed now. So what's up next? Next, we start seeds. It's been a very lazy 
winter, we've been not doing very much. We enjoyed a really lovely Christmas as a family. You know, it, it's so busy here in the summer um, that we really do try to take advantage of the quiet time in the winter. You know, the, it's our perfect time to be able to, you know, enjoy time with the kids, enjoy, you know, time on the farm that isn't working time. This is our getting back to it. This is our uh, facing reality that work must be done and vacation is over. We have to get rid of this. Well, you can probably just put it in Buddy's cat food dish. <laughs> We only need open flats because we're we're only starting a few things here. How many? Two. Two? Yeah. It's cold in there. Gotta keep all this dry dust. I find it a lot easier to fill up the trays with dry potting soil and then to get it wet before I then plant into it. Um, you know, if, if I was doing a hundred trays at a time, maybe it would make more sense to be using already dampened potting soil, but the dry, you know, fills in, doesn't leave any gaps. I don't have to worry about when I get this wet, it's gonna sink down majorly. I just need to be very careful when I do get it wet that I get it fully wet. So our potting soil is like not, <laughs> not good. Uh, what we're using is potting soil that we used last year. It had already gotten wet and then it kind of had dried out. The problem with that is it doesn't then rehydrate. Um, you know, with it being peat based, it basically, it just doesn't want to suck up the water. So I've now sprayed water on top of this. Water is in no way going in. Um, I could try to keep getting it wet, but it's literally gonna take me like an entire day <laughs> to try to get this wet. So I need to scrap the whole idea of what I was doing here. Um, and I, I need to actually get it wet before filling a tray. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some dry potting soil in this bucket. I didn't wanna get this wet because I'm, I'm only doing a few trays here, right? So I don't wanna wet an entire bucket because then it, you know, just starts to get gross, um, you know. So, so I'm go I'm gonna do a little bit here, but this is not my preferred technique. But I waste not, want not. We're only, we're only doing two trays. Yeah, we're only doing a couple trays here today, um, and and I don't, you know, maybe if it was like in the middle of the season and I was doing a million things, I'd just be like, whatever, and I go dump this somewhere. Um, but I don't have a lot of potting soil on hand, so I want to use this, but, uh, you know. Now that I got water in here, you know, it, it does not want to mix together. It still doesn't want to get wet, um, but because it's in a bucket, you know, I can use, you know, the effort of stirring it around to force the water back into this potting soil. Um, and, and kind of get it usable again. This is part of the reason why potting soil is so nice. It comes, you know, out of out of the bale and out of the bag, ready to be ready to be used and to be easy to use. Wet potting soil. Okay, so we're changing our plan now. Instead of you know, I was doing it in this because this is easy to, it holds the dry potting soil and get it wet. It drains well into the bottom. Um, you know, it's, it's just an easy way for me to work. But what we're actually gonna be doing, we're gonna be planting snapdragons and I'm not planting them one seed at a time because snapdragon seeds are a pain in the butt. They're so small, they're so hard to handle. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna sprinkle snapdragons over the surface of this tray. I'm gonna let them germinate. Once they pop up, 
Then I'm gonna pull them one at a time, pull them out, put them one at a time into trays. It's pain in the butt, but the amount of a pain in the butt this is, is way easier than trying to actually handle the Snapdragon seeds. So I can use a tray that's completely open. I have one that drains and then one that doesn't drain so that it can drain a little bit, you know, or, or I can drain it out if I want, but I need the ones that don't drain for when I'm growing stuff in my bathroom. Um, or else water will get everywhere and then Ian will be super mad at me. So, you will. <laughs> so I need to be a little bit more careful about how clean it all stays. But yeah, so we got the, the dirt. I'm just gonna spread it out in here. seeds on so they don't all just I don't want to be packing it down I want to keep some air in that potting soil that's one of the reasons why I like doing the dry when it gets wet you know it's you know I can pack it in when it's dry and not have to worry about compressing it too much okay let's put some seeds on here the snapdragons that I'm starting is my Costa snapdragons the plan with these is that they're gonna get planted out into the greenhouse probably in, in about six weeks it's gonna be still pretty cold out these are an early blooming variety so I you know get them into the greenhouse you know maybe I'll get snapdragon blooms in May I got Costa apricot and then I have a Costa mix this apricot color is super pretty so i'm excited to have a have a whole pack of it this i don't need a lot of space to be able to do this um but i'm going to i'm going to take up two trays just to make it easy i don't have to worry about limiting limiting what goes under the lights so i'm going to do an entire tray just for the apricot and then i'm going to do an entire tray for the mix so i don't get confused what's what Ding, tiny. <laughs> okay, let me let me show you guys just how pathetically small these Snapdragon seeds are. This is a 250 pack. You know, this pack of seeds probably cost me, you know, a good amount of money. Let's say this is like a $10 seed pack here. Maybe not quite that much for 250. There, 250 Snapdragons. Trying to put those in like one at a time is such a pain. So this this technique, much prefer this technique. And then what I'm gonna do with them is I'm just gonna grab them, sprinkle them just on the top. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make them not get too close to the edge just cause it'll be easier for me to be able to pull them out if they're not growing up into the edge. And then I'm just trying to space them out so that it's also easier to grab them when they germinate. Done. <laughs> so much easier. For this pack, this is a mix. And this is a thousand pack. The other pack was a 250 pack. Um, I don't actually need 1200 Costa Snapdragons because this is only um, one of, of a few varieties that we grow here. But I do probably want about an entire bed of, of Snapdragons. And so a bed, I fit, um, I do them six inch spacing. So I fit about 400 plants in a bed. So I'm gonna do, you know, about half of this pack and then my hope is to try to get 500 seedlings so that eventually, you know, when I go to plant them out, I have 400 good ones. Snapdragon, the reason why I'm just putting them on the surface like this and I'm not really doing anything after is Snapdragons like to have light to germinate. Um, I, I find with Snapdragons specifically, I can cover them up with something, um, but I'm not, I'm not too worried. Uh, these I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be in here at this point checking on these twice a day. You know, having them just on the surface, you need to be careful that they're not gonna dry out. Because if they dry out, they won't survive, they won't germinate. They need water as much as they need light. Um, but, you know, they'll they'll be getting babied. I I know that this works. I don't have to worry that, even though it's, it seems too easy, it seems too easy to believe. 
Soil's nice and wet, so I don't need to water it. Um, at this point, I just need to put them onto the racks. Okay, and then we need light. One plug-in for many lights. Wait. There you go. Wait impatiently. It, you know, they, they germinate pretty quickly. One of the reasons why I like growing in this bathroom is I can basically temperature control this entire space. Um, this bathroom here is controlled by its very own thermostat. It has electric heat. So, you know, I basically set this to be quite warm. You know, I'm not heating an entire house to this temperature. Um, but so at this point, because there's only the snapdragons, I can kind of set it to, you know, about 70 where it, it likes to be to germinate. And then, and then they pop up really quickly. First seeds of the year in place. Well, you know, I think the season's off to a pretty good start. I think I'm doing a really good job this year, turning over a new leaf, being, uh, very diligent in all my tasks. And I would say that I just shot some excellent, excellent film. What about you? I still have a lot more to plant. I know all we did was these Costa snapdragons. I have more snapdragons to start. I have a bunch more of perennials to start too. I'm just, I'm not gonna do them today. I need to organize my seeds still, um, but in, in a couple days, I need to be back down here. I need to be starting more stuff. All right, well, let's just do a little recap of 2021 and how it went for us here on the farm. I'll start with the good. Uh, we hit some pretty substantial financial uh, milestones as far as what we would sell at the markets. We finally made our $1,500 market, $1, market, which we had been aiming for since we started this farm. So it was nice to know that that's possible. We also routinely hit over $1,000 on our farmer's markets. That was amazing. Our sales were driven by the fact that we went with a $20 price point for our bouquets. The $20 price point was perfect. It sold well. As far as at the farm, we were growing lots of food. There wasn't too much complaints about the actual growing. We got some infrastructure projects completed. We finally got our walk-in cooler done. We also got our roadside stand done. We got a couple more greenhouses. On the personal side, which is where some of the, the tougher stuff was, Serena had some health issues that lost us about a month worth of farmer's markets. Uh, she still hasn't completely recovered from them, but she is doing better. I myself, I have a few lingering injuries that slow me down as well with my foot or, you know, just my eyes have been bugging me. But, you know, I think we're going into 2022 with kind of some momentum, some things that we have to work on. You know, we don't have a ton of infrastructure projects. We got to get the irrigation system complete and automated. I don't think we're going to have as much help from an employee this year. We might have like a little bit of employee time, but the way we're going, we're going to try and make the farm less maintenance so that it can be run just by Serena and I, which is a bit intimidating, but um, also exciting because the employee costs are very substantial. For the last three years on the farm, our focus has really been on veggies. It's, it's where our passion is. We love growing food. We love the idea of feeding our community. But you know, when I've looked back over the numbers, uh, especially on this past year, there was no growth last year over our second year in veggie sales, even though we were producing way more, way better product. You know, we really should have seen those sale numbers go up and we didn't where we did see good strong sales and the numbers that really made it. So we hit that $1,500 sales at our farmer's market, which is what we need to be able to be a profitable farm. Um, it, it was the flowers and the flowers, you know, if we were to focus on them, it would mean that we could actually put a lot less labor hours into the farm. The veggies take a lot of work, you know, and the reality is they, don't make us any money. So for 2022, we're really going hard on the flowers where we basically are going from being a veggie farm who grows some flowers to being a flower farm that grows some veggies. It's going to look so beautiful having, you know, this half acre of just flowers, 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 flowers everywhere. 
We love food. We love growing food. We're still going to be growing food. We're going to have a massive amount of food for ourselves personally. Um, but the focus is going to be on making some money with flowers. The misting. I just because the seeds are right on the surface. You don't want to like I don't want to water them all into the edges of the tree. 